Okay, here is the epitome of glider control. Jump, fly 30 feet, land pinpoint on a single spot. That takes skill. Okay, students, day one, all you're trying to do is get basic controls. Try and keep the glider over your head. You can see all his body weights on his feet and jerking controls, over controlling it. it Got to work on that. That's day one stuff. By day two, right here. Now he's starting to get the hang of it, starting to get the controls a little bit better, but you can see he's still standing lock legged. That's totally wrong. Day three, uh, he's starting to lean back, load the glider a little bit. You can see he's going to be a little quicker, smoother. By day four, now look at his butt is hanging out over the ground. He's not standing above his feet. He's actually carrying his weight with the glider and his glider control, directional control and loading control is getting much better. Still lots of pieces to go. On to the run and jumps. Now he's trying to learn the dynamics of loading control during a launch and a landing. And it is very difficult. There are a lot of pieces. So as you can see, big issue. Now, next day, it's getting a little better, still getting timing off, still missing some of the loading and the feel and the control. Again, you don't get the pieces right. It gets really ugly, but look how quickly he regains control. He's getting the pieces, getting the reflexes. Now, day seven, bam, run and jump, times it perfectly, doesn't fall forwards, doesn't get drugged backwards maintains control so he goes on to flying notice a super by the time they get to flying they have incredible glider control they pull the glider up they maintain control they've got the loading they're not taking collapses and all they're working on the, on the new dynamics of the motor so as he's launching he's controlling the loading working on the direction now he's got to work on oscillation and torque you can see him start to oscillate swings back and forth the torque's going to torque him right so now he's got to work through the dynamics of the motor still continuing on glider control now look at this he's literally balancing his body using the glider that's loading control when you can do that the odds of you taking a collapse are about as low as it's going to get this is looking beautiful he's balancing his body this is beyond expert level stuff here you can't learn this in no wind it doesn't work so on to his flights now he's flying, uh, starting to drop glider sizes. You saw his flare timings off, he balloons up, but he maintains perfect control, loading doesn't take a collapse. Now, by the 10th day, watch this landing. Boom, perfect, beautiful loading control. And he's already worked all the way down to an extra, extra small, takes off, watch zero oscillation in the glider, glider climbs out perfectly, exact direction he wants. Again, look at this control by day 10. Maintains perfect control, lands. Doesn't lose control after landing. Maintain controls, goes right back into another touch and go. So huge difference, zero oscillation, and he's worked all the way down to an extra, extra small glider. That's what real instruction produces, skilled pilots. Here's a guy with fake training. Watch the hands closely. There is no directional input. You won't see any finesse or feel. He doesn't correct for surges. The glider goes behind him, doesn't put his hands up. All he's told is to run, hit throttle, and then add brakes to pop off the ground, which the instructor tells him. Then hands up and he goes right back to absolutely nothing. He's oscillating, he's porpoising, he's torquing, he's told, good job, no actual instruction. Now he comes into land again, absolutely zero. The only thing he's told is take the brakes and push them all the way to the ground. But now, touches the ground, glider control is required. You can see he immediately loses control, turns the wrong way, runs the wrong way, buries the brake. Can you see the difference between expert level and zero skill? Watch the hands. Okay, so you as the viewer, I can feel your pain. It's this guy says this, that guy says that. How can you tell the difference between who actually knows what the heck they're doing and who is literally totally incompetent and just scamming people with completely bogus training? You have to look very closely and you have to think intelligently and you have to do your research. Now, I specifically picked a video where it looks like the guy makes a perfect launch. If you're not a pilot and you don't know anything about the sport, you might say, that was a beautiful landing. It's exactly the same. Look at the, the takeoff. It was beautiful. 
I picked it very specifically because it it's easy to be deceived at the difference. When people take a video and they cut out, you know, 97 other launch attempts that are failed where the guy swings and oscillates and crashes and pounded into the ground and they take just one where the guy happens to get lucky, how do you as a viewer tell the difference? Now, it's actually harder to really see because the difference between a master pilot and someone who's totally incompetent is this big. <laughs> Now, why is it that big? Why is mastery only that far off of this? Let me explain why. Because those with no skill do zero, okay? Those who are master level pilots, tiny little quarter inch corrections, doom, 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 tiny. They're very small. You're making quarter inch corrections, very small, very quick, four to five per second and you're absolutely perfectly controlling the glider and keeping the loading, the pitch, everything perfect while running into the wind, while weight shifting, leaning the correct way, running the correct way. There's so many little pieces where you take someone that goes to Joe, Jimmy, Bob, Kyle O, who doesn't even have the basic skills themselves, and they're told, run, hit the throttle, after almost no kiting at all, where Watch my video. If you look at the day one, hey, his glider's above him, right? He knows what he's doing. He's ready to fly. No, he's standing lock-legged, all his body weight's on his feet. Now, you can tell a day one student who's trying to control the glider because they're jerking and yanking and over-controlling. It's very easy to see the difference between someone who's trying to do it um, and someone who does nothing, that's easy because you can see a huge, gigantic difference. But when people are literally taught to do absolutely nothing but run and hit throttle, it's difficult for you as a viewer to see the actual difference. You might actually think the guy who does nothing has more skills than the new student who's actually trying to control the glider. The difference is is yeah, someone can get lucky if they take like 50, 80, 90 attempts and they get lucky where it just happens to stay straight the whole time, total sheer luck, they did nothing and they take only that video and they put it on YouTube and say, look how good we trained our student. How do you tell the difference between that guy and the super student who can do that same thing 20 times in a row? Training is not chucking someone in the air until they got in the air. Training is teaching them until they never get it wrong over and over and over. Now, another thing to look for that makes it easier is after they land. You'll notice those who got scammed on training will immediately lose control or they will try to control it and they will stick arm it, making huge, big, jerk, yanky movements like day one super student. Watch a day one super student. And he's not even doing bad. He's doing pretty good because that was after hours and hours and hours and hours of training. I mean, guys on day one of super training could literally get eight hours. So our day one student still going to look much better than someone who graduated training somewhere else. The difference is huge between day one over controlling and day 10 making correct smooth small little control loading the glider now another thing is loading control people if you don't know how to fly you don't understand that you don't actually have to run with weight on your back only guys with bogus training run with weight on their back an actual student that's trained properly controls how much weight is on their body. As soon as you have some airspeed, the pilot, the real pilot, will immediately be feeling and controlling the loading of the glider, carrying the weight of the paramotor and part of their body weight. The guy that's running with his hands up who does nothing has no loading in the glider other than the airspeed that he's making. So he is not controlling the lift and making the job 
90% easier. He's making it very difficult because he has to carry all the body weight. Plus, the loading is changing, which adds dynamic issues. Also, it doesn't allow you to increase airspeed and then get off the ground properly. Where the super student, as the airspeed increases, as you're running, you're going to be putting hands up to prevent yourself from coming off the ground before you build correct airspeed. Then you're going to add a little bit of brake at the perfect time and come off the ground all at once. There's so many dynamics to it where the guy who told to do nothing, his hands are locked up. They do absolutely nothing. Run, 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 run. And then he slams some brakes and pops in the air. There is a huge world of difference. But you as the viewer, I understand. I feel your pain because it's difficult to know who's telling the truth. And if I say something like, uh, Kylo or Aviator PBG or Kurt Fister, these people don't have even the most basic skills. You're like, what do you mean? That's why you have to ask them to do something that you can't fake. Okay. You can fake a launch. I just showed you. You can tell someone to run and hit throttle and they could possibly get off the ground, but they're not controlling the glider. Any turbulence, anything goes wrong, any oscillation, they don't have any reflexes to control the loading, hit brakes as they're coming down and control the descent rate. That's an unskilled pilot. A master level pilot is going to be able to demonstrate master level skills. If somebody can kite up a pole, you can't fake that. You can't take a day one student and get them to kite up a pole by luck and go, look, I did it. <laughs> that's not going to be fake. Or kiting on a fence. That's not luck. You see the student controlling his altitude. You're not going to see a student stand there by luck. It's not luck. It's loading control. A launch with no hands, that you can get luck. So when you take a look at someone who doesn't have even the most basic skills, you have to demand that they show something that requires actual skills. Take these people, send them a video of my students and say, look, can you or can't you reverse kite no hands? Show me a video of yourself doing it. That one you're not gonna fake. You're not gonna sit there and kite for two, three minutes reverse with no hands and fake that accidentally. Not going to happen. You're not going to kite up a pole accidentally. It's, it's forcing people to demonstrate skills and not letting them totally defraud you with a load of BS and bull crap and trash talking. There's skills and there's trash talking and there's fake, which is editing and only putting something that got lucky on YouTube that can be luck. But you have to listen to the words coming out of people's mouths. You have to also realize when you're seeing first flight videos on YouTube, who cares? We don't give a crap about the first flight. I want to see their 199th flight. I want to see their 400th flight. I want to see them flying on their 189th flight with an extra, 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 extra small glider. If all you have is some huge 30 square meter, you are in a world of hurt. If the wind picks up at all when you're aloft, you're going to get blown backwards and it's going to be a nightmare. In order to fly as safely as possible and have as much fun and be able to fly in the widest range of weather conditions, you need to be able to have true and real skills that aren't faked and aren't luck that you can repeat over and over and over. And you got to have smaller glider. You've got to work those skills down as you progress from, you know, flight after flight after flight after flight. Look at any other school and compare, okay? It's not about he said, she said. It's about facts and skills. Are you seeing other schools where their students are getting hundreds of flights? No, only at super training because to get repeatable results takes skills. There's lots of people out there showing, hey, here's our students' first flights. Good job. He graduated. He's a pilot. What? After a flight? After five? After 15? Suddenly he's a pilot? 
No, it takes doing it over and over and over until you never get it wrong. That's what allows you to go home in the mountains and fly in no wind and have finesse and feel and such a sensitivity that you're not gonna over control and spin and stall your glider and just have a catastrophic nightmare. It's also the exact same feel if you can kite up a fence or a pole that's the same skill it takes to fly in turbulence. If you can keep your pitch and loading and direction all the same and perfectly under control on the ground and keep your glider from collapsing, well, it's the exact same thing in flight. Glider tries to pitch forward, boom, add brakes. Loss of loading, boom, you're adding brakes. Glider goes behind you, you feel the loading spike, hands up, direction, input, bam, left, right, down, up, down tiny little small corrections, actual control. So you have to look skill for skill, not BS versus BS. Stop trying to compare what this guy said to that guy said. Focus on skill. Take the video of brand new super students, send it to other instructors and say, can you do what they are doing or can't you? I will link the video of a bunch of stuff that super students are doing. Send it to other instructors. Don't be a fool and just go anywhere and go, oh, it'll probably work out. Yeah, like it did for Grant or Eric, who are both dead, who didn't listen to my advice. And there's a list of others. Over 80 people have died that didn't listen. They didn't take the time to research the difference between no control and getting lucky and mastery level control where you're making tiny little corrections. Now, when you're driving down the freeway in your car, okay, you're making all these little corrections on the steering wheel to keep yourself in between the lines. What if you were doing this and over controlling? You would crash and die. It's the same thing in this sport. If someone doesn't have the ability to maintain direction of a car, they shouldn't be on the street. If someone doesn't have the ability to maintain control of the glider, they shouldn't be trying to fly or getting in the air. People, this is your life. It's not about sales pitch. It's about your dang life. It's not about putting other people down because that's one of the big lies they'll use. Oh, he just trash tosses everything. That's not trash. I'm giving you the facts. I'm showing you the facts. I'm pinpoint specifically naming details and showing you what to look, the difference between luck and real actual skill that can't be faked. You know, you're just cherry picking one video where somebody got lucky versus someone that shows you a video of real actual training where students will be able to repeat it over and over and over and over. Like at super training, you see them working on that run and jump, run, jump, get that timing. We don't let you just do it once. He didn't, I did it once in the video because I don't want the video to be four hours long or actually 10 days long. He did it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times until he was able to do it 10 times in a row without failure. We don't make you practice until you get it right. We make you practice until you don't get it wrong. That's why when you hook up a glider, the super students have a very good experience. And you can take a dozen super students who all learn and get zillions of flights and the whole class damages nothing. You take people with no skill, you put them on gear that horrible, it is a carnage fest. Two more people hit in the feet with their prop. Another guy goes through the netting of a scout, almost chops his shoulder off. I'll make a video about later. Constant carnage, people getting shredded in props, getting smacked into the ground, breaking backs, dying when it's so basic. It's very simple. Learn real actual skills. But without a beach and wind all day long to practice, you can't learn real skills without real practice. How do you practice kiting if you don't have wind? Oh, well, we teach students how to launch and no wind. Well, with how do they practice? Gliders don't fly in zero wind. It's impossible. Airplanes don't fly with zero airspeed. They have to have airspeed. So in order to practice the feel of the glider with airspeed, you can either run and make wind or you can stand on a beautiful beach with sand below you 
in the wind and practice all day long as comfortably and as effortly as possible. Think of that. How long does it take to do a no wind forward inflation? Six seconds of practice? Eight seconds of practice? What are you going to do? Run 11 miles an hour all day long for 10 days in a row to build upwards of 80 hours of practice to build real skill? You cannot train inland because you just simply can't get enough practice. And yeah, anybody can cherry pick a video and show you luck where it happened to get off lucky and he just happened to get off without destroying the gear. But I guarantee you, if you actually look at the facts or talk to anyone who's been there, they will talk about the carnage and the guy that fell down and the prop that exploded and went through the cage piece. Now, look at my last video of the Parajet review and look at all the people that started making in the comments. Oh yeah, I experienced that. Oh yeah, the prop hit my foot. Oh yeah, I saw this guy fall down and the whole thing just exploded. Oh yeah, I had that experience. They're confirming the facts of what happens. So there is so much more to it. And it's very frustrating because it's like you've got the best training in the world trying to compete with people that are totally incompetent and dishonest. And it's about educating you to be able to see the difference between nothing and mastery level. You have to look for skills and to make it easier, force them to show you something that takes skills. Launching is incredibly difficult. Now, if you try it 80 times and do nothing but run and hit throttle, you might just get off the ground just fine. Imagine if we taught you how to fly a Cessna by telling you to do absolutely nothing, hammer throttle, do nothing. I guarantee you, you could get that Cessna off the, off the runway. And if you did it enough and crashed enough Cessnas, you could probably get a video of the Cessna taking off beautifully and it would look beautifully. How would you be able to tell the guy who cherry picked that one flight where he got off the ground in a straight line versus the guy who can do it every single time because he's making small, tiny, little constant corrections, keeping everything perfect. It's, it's skill versus no skill. And you gotta be smarter than the average dumpster to be able to do the research and force people to show skills and compare skill against skill instead of bull crap against bull crap. Don't take trash talking. Trash talking is worthless. Force them to show skills. They don't have the skills, go to the guy who's teaching the best skills. That's super training. I challenge you to show a video, link a video. If I'm wrong, show me, link a video. Instead of everybody agreeing with me in the comments, link a video and show yourself demonstrating real actual skills that you learned at any other school. I challenge you. I double dog dare you to try and post a video showing your skills. Can you do it? There's all sorts of people that go, hey, look at my flight. My instructor was awesome. Bull crap. Show me a video of you demonstrating something that takes skill. Prove it. People's life are worth it. It's worth speaking up because people are getting seriously injured and killed because they didn't know jack squat for difference. They have to hear the facts. They have to hear the truth. And no matter how much the liars bash, trash, and threaten you to take down your video, don't show the truth. Have the guts. Be the guy that has the honor that is willing to stand up and be ridiculed but tells the truth and does the honorable thing. Do you have the honor and integrity to stand up and tell the truth? Do it, show it, link me the video, prove me wrong. Please show that I'm a liar. Show that other schools are building students with more skills than mine. If it were true, link the video. No bull crap required. Let's go flying, but do it right. It's literally the funnest and one of the safest action sports you can do on the planet if you get super training, a flat top, and a dominator. That's it. Do it right, great experience. Do it wrong, it's really ugly. Don't do it wrong. Do your research. Come on, people. Use your head. Do your research. Look at it. Prove me wrong. In the act of trying to prove me wrong, 
you will learn how correct I am and just how difficult it is and how much work you will have to do searching to try and prove me wrong. And after you've spent hours and hours trying to prove me wrong, post and say how many hours you tried to prove me wrong and still couldn't. Think of that one for a second. If I'm wrong, it should take you five seconds of searching YouTube to find it, prove it, link it, bam, this guy's a liar, boom, enough said. Prove it, let's do it.